we're digging deeper into a kidnapping and murder of an area family that happened more than three decades ago. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allie Peters. And I'm Phil Aldridge. The man responsible for that kidnapping was released from prison today. Chris Jacobs III spent more than 20 years behind bars for kidnapping Helen Coons. But tonight, the DOC tells us Jacobs is once again locked up. Right now, he sits in the Marathon County Jail. That's where we find News 9's Tom Lally. He joins us live with a look back at this disturbing case. Tom. Hey, Phil. Well, Jacobs was convicted for kidnapping Helen Coons in 1998. He went on trial just a few years before that for killing her and four of her family members. An out-of-town jury acquitted him on those charges, and the murders have gone unsolved. The case that captured more attention than any other in the state, the murder of the five Coons family members. It appeared a, a cold-blooded execution of five people on, uh, who were in their home at, at night just enjoying their whatever their lives were. It was a hot July morning in the summer of 1987 when Ken Coons found four of his family members dead at their home outside of Athens. I'm, I'm just stunned. The small community numbed as months passed without a suspect and a fifth member of the Coons family, Helen, was still missing. Horrific crime. Somebody needs to be accountable. Six months after the murders, the Marathon County Sheriff's Department called in their first suspect. Chris Jacobs III of Medford. Shortly after that, in a Taylor County lake. At this time, based on clothing identification. A body is found. The skeletal remains are believed to be that of Helen Coons. Then Jacobs was charged with the five murders and went to trial in October of 1989. I was there every day. It was roughly three weeks, as I remember. Bob Imry reported the case for the Associated Press. As I remember, there's two pieces of evidence that linked Chris Jacobs potentially to the scene. Gun shell cases and tire tracks that experts matched to his car. And then some motive that Jacobs knew the family apparently and had tried to buy a car there or something at one time. A jury brought in from Brown County decided that was not enough. Not guilty of murder in the first degree of Helen yes. Coons. <laughs> yes. About July 5th, 1987. He didn't say anything. He was trembling. He, he was near tears. And uh, I think he was frankly too emotionally upset to say anything. That night, Bob went to Chris Jacobs' farm and sat across the table from the man who walked free. They felt they were wrongly targeted. By the police and those who testified as Jacobs tried to return to a normal life. Do you think he can resume a normal life? I don't know. Uh, I hope so. I hope this verdict puts this case behind him. But that's not how this ends. Ten years passed, and Jacobs finds himself back in court. This time, it's solely for the kidnapping and false imprisonment of Helen Coons. Yeah, well, the, the question was, what new evidence do they have? A testimony from Jacobs' former girlfriend. Because he said he trusted me and he had to tell somebody to get it off his chest. She had recently been arrested for a bank robbery in Minneapolis. This testimony, a part of her plea deal, she said he admitted to the murders and the kidnapping of Helen Coons. He was going to take her to rape her so he could lose his virginity. This time, there was enough. Chris Jacobs III was found guilty, receiving the maximum sentence. And that brings us to today. Years later, Jacobs was released, but the Department of Corrections tells me that there was a rule violation, and so now he's in the Marathon County Jail. They couldn't tell us exactly what had happened because it's an ongoing investigation, but we will be sure to bring you updates as they come in. Live at the Marathon County Jail, Tom Lally, News 9, WAOW.